Y'all already know what time it is, man. Mr. Real Spill in the building, man. The one and only OG Hollywood, man. Just did a dope interview with Real Life Street Stars, man. Do me a favor. Go to Real Life Street Stars and subscribe, man. And watch this bad motherfucking interview. Salute. Real life street star. Hold on, man. We got him in the building, man. God dang it. Uh, Hollywood, uh, one of the OGs of OGs, man. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people that look at this internet and see your face and know exactly who you are. And there's some that's going to know you after this conversation we have, you know. And um, it's funny. We just had uh, Dewberry in here. Facts. Um, and you have a relationship with Dewberry? You have a relationship with Dewberry? Facts. And he says something, uh, man, you know, boys ain't been battle tested. You know, boys ain't been put through the ringer. And you, in your life story, you've really been, you know, you beyond tested. You beyond, you know, <laughs> the, the more is only battle tested something for the young boys. You know what I'm saying? You, you beyond that. You know what I'm saying? So definitely, first and foremost, I appreciate you coming through and hollering at us. Uh, for those that may not know, um, tell us, uh, you know, even the name Hollywood, is, is that what you always went by? Is that uh, something you got early on? Oh man, the name Hollywood came uh, at a you know very young age, man. To be honest, uh, if you can remember Dallas Cowboys, Hollywood Henderson. Oh yeah, number fifty six linebacker, right? Yeah, my last name Henderson. Oh man, oh right, yeah, yeah. Uh, two sport athlete in school, <sighs> and damn good. <laughs> so. Uh, I took up the name Hollywood Henderson, you know, and, and ever since then it's been who I am. So that's been from the sports. Yeah, that was from the sports. Now, we got you here, man, because, you know, again, we get a lot of stories, a lot of game from a lot of people that actually did some time. And you are a person who's done probably more time than some of these guys that we had sit here that do these little, you know, dime bits and kind of get out and think they know it all. Fact. Uh, how much time did you do overall? 25 flat. 25 flat, man. Um. Was it a situation where you're supposed to do 25 flat and get out, or did you have more time and it just got reduced to 25 and you got out? Or I wish it was like that. Jeez, I wish. <laughs> All right, so let's do it like this, man. I wish. I wish. I, I wish they gave me 25 and I was just supposed to get out, right? Yeah. But unfortunately, man, uh, you know, to get to the motherfucking uh, meat and potatoes of that situation, man, uh, you know, I was given a, a life sentence. Oh wow. And you don't get a life sentence for fucking going to church, you know, nah, or being a Sunday school boy, right? Uh, Y'all got a life sentence, man. And, uh, you know, they say you're supposed to do 15 years, right? Yeah. But not counting all the uh, the set-offs. What I mean set-offs, uh, you get denied parole. Mm. So, uh, you know, long story short, I wind up doing 25 years on a life sentence. Man. All right, so let's go all the way through there, man. Um, uh, you're from you're from Dallas, born and raised West Dallas, Texas. West Dallas, Texas. Are you a fish trap area? Where you where were you at? Both, both, Just all, all all through there. Fish trap, King Bridge, Apple Grove, uh, all that shit. Old school shit though, not that new shit. Yeah, old school. We always ask. Uh, we try to get an understanding of how people grew up. Um, uh, if they had a two parent household, older brothers, older sisters, younger brother, like. What was your family dynamic? What was your family scenario growing up? Well, it, it's uh, it's it's four in the family, right? Uh, got one, one brother, two sisters, right? So, uh, I mean, it was just typical, it was a typical household. I mean, it wasn't a uh, white picket fence. If that's what you ask. Were you the oldest? No, I'm the youngest. The youngest out the of young, the, the youngest boy. Okay. Of okay. Four. Yeah, uh, was your dad there? Uh, stepdad? Uh, uh, who's the male figure in your house? I'm just curious. Uh, it wasn't ever no stepdad, but I mean, you know, it's kind of like this, man. When 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 you living in the ghetto, right, and somebody got to go to work, mm. whether it be hustling or whether it be on a nine to five, so a father's not gonna be present at all times, you know. And and I put it like this: to answer that question. Yes, he was there. Was he there all the time? No. And he wasn't a part-time dad because I seen him every day, right? Yeah. It just was the fact that, man, uh, he wasn't tuned in or? 
Nah, when you, I mean, it's, 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 it's typical, man. When you're in an oppressed situation, man, pops ain't gonna be there all the time, man. Sometimes yeah. you gotta fend for yourself, you know? Yeah, nah, I grew up kind of the, uh, where my dad was a homemaker. I mean, my dad was the going to go out to get him. My mom was a homemaker, so I barely saw my dad. He worked 12 hour shifts. So he ain't had no real say so except for the times I saw him. Yeah. But mama kind of ran it on. Um. Yeah. So yeah. for you, uh, you know, like you said, you always have a few choices. Most kids coming up, this is the, uh, you coming up in the 70s uh, as a kid? Uh, oh, it's 60. 60s. Oh, okay, oh. all right, man. Let's do it like this because in the 60s, you don't really have, uh, you know, and I want to go through a bunch of 60s stuff. We're going to go through like the times of that time, but mm -hmm. what are the goals of kids in your neighborhood? Like, is it uh, to go to war? Is it go to the army? Is it go play sports? Is it uh, be a musician? Is it get on the block and, you know, get to it? I mean, what, what are the... Like, what are the outs for young black men in the 60s in Dallas? For me. For you, let's go. I can't speak for the, for the, for the outsiders. Yeah. For me, it was try to, uh, you know, pave a way out of poverty. Yeah. And the way I seen to pave the way out of poverty was through sports, right? Yeah. And uh, as far as the idea of, you know, getting out of the ghetto, man, you know, you didn't have too many inspiring people around. You know, yeah. drug dealers, robbers, stealers, burglars, you know, anything that had to do with criminal activity, man, you know, uh, that's what you saw every day. You know, in, in, the, in, my, in, my, in, my, in my environment in, in the 60s. And so you're, in, you're in the sports at this time, right? You're, yeah, I'm in the sports. Um, all right, so let's do it like this because I'm, I'm, it's going to open up some, some topics of conversation. You did do a bid at, in 1985. Facts. How old were you when you went in during that time? Uh, I got certified as an adult. Mm. So I was 17. Damn. So you went in at 17, 85. Yeah. yeah. What was that? What was that? Uh, what was that charge to get you? However much time you got? Oh, uh, it was uh, <laughs> it was aggravated robbery. Aggravated robbery. Um, and that was for the simple fact that you needed some money, or you just doing what the other boys doing, or you was like, uh, no. Like, I never ever did anything that nobody else did. There you go. You know, <laughs> what I did was to try and provide for the household. Yeah. Right? Because like I said, you know, shit, you know, it's kind of like when, when, when the father's absent, right? Yeah. Who's up next? Oh, yeah. It's the male figure of the house, whether you're young or whether you're old. Yeah. Somebody has to step up, right? Without question. And that was me. And, uh, so shit, uh, my thing was this, uh, I didn't have the patience to sell drugs mm. because it didn't come fast enough. You know, I'm like the commercial, I need my money now. Man, <laughs> talk about it. You know, so uh, I picked up robbery. You this know? is a convenience store? Uh, no. Who put you on game? As Who put as me on game as far as- Robbery, like how did uh, you just- that's what we was known for in West Dallas. Okay. It was for aggravated robbery. You know, uh, it wasn't, it, it wasn't uh, to uh, rob the next guy to you because that money wasn't insured, uh, right? Yeah. And so I was brought up in, 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 in the robbery game the right way. You don't rob your neighbor because the money is not insured. And another reason you don't rob your neighbor because you're gonna see him again. Thanks. You know Thanks. what I'm saying? Right. So a yeah. lot of people used to justify that uh, you rob a store, a bank, something like that, because uh, the money's insured. There's no real losses that's being taken. This is it's gonna get you know you're gonna get it back. I'm gonna you know I'm gonna put in the neighborhood. I'm gonna, so they they'll use that as saying, all right, well, I'm not yeah I won't rob my neighbor and take what he got, but I go hit this spot over here that has I know the FDIC protecting it or this building that got this. So I understand. So um. How much time did they give you that first time? Because this your, is this your first offense? This, I mean, it's the first time I've been caught. Okay, like okay, yeah, first, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, first time I've been caught. So uh, I went to juvenile, to be exact. I was a juvenile when I did the crime, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was picked up and put in the juvenile facility, man, and, and, and uh, a little inside secret. I don't know if y'all familiar with the, uh, the county commissioner, John Wilder Price. Oh, yeah, uh, we actually... Uh, Sit down with him. Okay. Well, that's a uh, a close friend of the family, right? Yeah. So I never seen any days in the juvenile facility. Damn, that's real. 
as soon as I would go to juvenile, he would get a call and show up at the juvenile facility and guess what? Sign, I'm gone. Mm -hmm. So he's a friend of the family though? Very, very close friend. So they, somebody makes a phone call saying, oh, they didn't pick up? Yes. Okay. Rodney's in juvenile. Can you look into it? Mm. Oh, that's pool. That's pool. So, you know, the judge said, oh, uh, you know, John Wilder Price, your uncle? Of course. Okay. Well, you being released today. And I'm just curious about that. You know, he had to go sit down for a little bit too, right? Yeah. Uh, did you have any part of protection in that? Uh, you got to remember when he went, <laughs> when he went and sit down, right? Yeah. I was already sitting down for a long time. Yeah. You know, I had already been put on the shelf when he was going through his trial. Yeah. You know, did I watch it? Yeah. Did I have any advice for him? No. So, so and he's in a, uh, and real quick, where did you serve that uh, when you got the juvenile? Where were you supposed to go to? Like, just a boys' home? Yeah, what? they was they was talking about sending me to, uh, sending me to Brownwood. Okay, which, yeah, which would be T. Uh, what was it? TYC. Yeah, TYC didn't have. Okay, there you go. Boom. <laughs> he said, "All right." So and it's crazy because sometimes that make you feel like you untouchable out here. Uh, you know, sometimes you seventeen, you impress, you make you feel like, "Hey, man, I, hey, I, I, shit, I'm untouchable out here. I can move around." Ain't no doubt. So all right, so you got a little uh, chip on your shoulder. Um, this is eighty five. Um, you still providing for your family? I'm assuming you're yes. still going through the motions. Yes. Now, there's a situation where, you know, because this is going to preface the whole interview as far as kind of how we speak, uh, where you got a life sentence. Now, in regards to your life sentence, um, of course, a crime has to take place. And uh, uh, can you at least speak on the, what happened for you to get that life sentence? And therefore, again, this is going to shape the character of this whole interview. So, OK, we go. We, this is this is this is this is what happened, man. And, and you got to remember I went to the juvenile facility for aggravated robbery, right? Uh, I was released. Uh, it's kind of like on your personal recondence, you know, okay? But it, it, it doesn't go away. All you did was get released. You still have to go back to court, right? Right. So I go back to court, uh, and I wind up getting locked up again in the juvenile facility. Why? Because they gave me a juvenile probation that I didn't live down. As soon as I was released, probation, he let me go home, and guess what? I said, fuck probation, right? Damn. So I didn't complete the probation. How long was the probation for? I can't remember. The shit was so long. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Okay. So, <laughs> so anyway, man, uh, I get the juvenile probation, right? And the reason why I didn't complete the probation is because they wanted me to move out of the projects. They wanted me to move into a uh, four bedroom house uh, across Hamilton in West Dallas, right? And I moved for, for a little bit, but I wind up coming back to the project, so I didn't complete the probation, right? Yeah. So they wind up putting me back inside the juvenile, juvenile hall, right? Yeah. And uh, I didn't want to be there. <laughs> real, 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 real spiel. So they had a NWA concert that was in Dallas. Never forget, NWA concert was in Dallas. So I partnered with another dude that was uh, in the juvenile. I said, man, we got to get out of this bitch. So we conjured up a plan. And I said, you know what? When we go into the room, we're going to take the key. So, you know, in the attempt to take the key, we got it. Took it from the lady. And it's a two door process. You got to go in. You got to open the first door and the second door, right? Yeah. We open the first door, unsuccessful on the second door, right? Damn. So now everybody's pissed off. The judge, the people in the juvenile, everybody's pissed off. Got it. Right? Uh, this ain't no fucking juvenile. This is an adult, <laughs> right? Because he's making adult moves. He's trying to fucking escape. So, anyway, man, uh, they transferred me to a uh, adult court. Yeah. So now I'm being escorted to from the juvenile to fucking loose theory court. Yeah. Now I'm being tried as an adult. Right? Uh so I leave the juvenile and they put me in the fucking government center, the worst fucking jailhouse in Dallas County. Mm. So I'm already on the tank with fucking uh robbers, rapists. Oh yeah. 
people that's done been to prison. I've never been. And I'm on this motherfucker at 17. Damn. You know, with everything under the sun, right? And uh, they run me through the court, man. Finally, I get a, a bond, which I was released on a personal recondence bond, right? Yeah. Okay, but we're going back to what you said, though. I feel like I'm untouchable. So I'm, I'm back in the streets, right? Yeah. Well, known figure in West Dallas. So I'm back at the park where all the hustlers at, right? And uh, we, you know, we doing what we do, which is robbery. You know, we rob. That's what we do. We know, we known for that. You know. At the time, how many rob, how many robberies like a month did you try to pull off? Oh, I wasn't no. It, it, it's whenever my motherfucking pocket go flat. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Re up time. Yeah, I. It's like it's, you know that's no my quota. <laughs> uh, that's my job. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's kind of like okay, a motherfucking car need a moat in it. It's time to go to work. Yeah. <laughs> You know, when so, it breaks down is when it yeah, it's time to go get it. Yeah, I'm putting it in the shop. I already know it's paid for. You know what I'm saying? Somebody gonna pay for it. One of these businesses is gonna pay for it. Mm. And, and and that was my mindset, right? So man, uh, I get caught up. You know, I get caught up, and mm. I got caught up. And and, and what happened? They gave me a, a eight year probation. It was deferred. I don't know if y'all familiar with the deferred adjudicated probation. Yeah, there we are. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm in the streets, but my case is still open. Facts. Right? So I got deferred adjudicated with the with the hopes of me living it down and me not having a record. Right. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. No, wasn't gonna happen. So you're back active. Um I'm just curious. So like a situation comes about to where, again, a life sentence is, you know, well, normally it's a life for a life. So is this a situation where someone's life uh was taken, uh someone's life was in danger? Uh, like what? What was the scenario in which uh, that case or the situation gave you a life sentence? Uh, anytime you commit an aggravated robbery, I don't care what kind of aggravated robbery, is, somebody's always in danger. You, the person that's being robbed, you know, it's 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 the reason why they name it aggravated. Yeah, because it's a weapon involved, right? And and, and crazy as this may sound, uh. You know, people used to be scared to go rob with me. Why? Wow. Well, because my, I had a motto when we go put work in. And I said, it's not aggravated robbery, somebody gets shot. And they be like, Hollywood, you crazy as fuck. We get the money and you still shoot them. That's what make it aggravated robbery. Because if you get arrested, that's what they're going to charge you with. Might as well. You might as well shoot somebody. Damn. And, and, I know it's, it's fucked up, right? Yeah, yeah it is. It is. <laughs> it, it is. But, so wait, you will be successful with a robbery and say, "I just got to, I got to pop you out of the way," because yeah, I got, I got to hear it. So when you would go on a robbery, um, how did how how would it start out? Would you um, did did someone have to get hit right when you would walk in? Because like I had a partner and say, "Well, you getting one off top." Oh no no no! See, I ain't no I ain't no damn fool like that. I I, I come to get the money. Okay. You know, me shooting you without the money is 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 hustling backwards. Mm. Oh no no no! So, I'm, so not not shot, just like hit, maybe pistol whipped or something. Oh something no, like you know it it, it got to be a reason for me to put that butter that pistol on you. Okay. Now, 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 now. if you follow orders, you gonna make it through that process if you follow orders. You know, but at the end of the day, I, I got to unload, though. Have you ever tied somebody up? I don't have no need to tie nobody up. I'm coming to get the money. I don't give a damn if you loose or not. <laughs> damn. You know, I, I, I'm in charge when I come in the building. So how much do you know about the money that's there each situation that you go into? Like, you know where the money is, how to get it? That's my job. Oh, okay, okay. Just so like pl planning goes into it? Yes. Okay. What I'm saying, you see how y'all Yeah, you yeah, you would they like you yeah, you an adult for real. This nigga yeah. this nigga planning like a mother. That's my motherfucking job. You know, I, I the, the safe and inside any hotel is always in the manager's office. And it's bolted to the floor on four motherfucking me uh two by fours mm. with the deep screws through it, right? Yeah. So I need to know who the manager is. I can't do nothing with no fucking cashier. Who is the manager? I, I need to talk to him. And when they don't obey, that's when they get one to the head with the butt. 
See, that, that's yeah. that's when the violence come in. So you, you can't, ain't no understanding if ain't no violence. Thanks. All that shit is gonna do is hold you up because they're gonna try to save the company's money. Right. So you start off with violence, like just to show them if. Yeah, if they're not cooperative. Yes. You know, if you're not cooperating, so you, you know, you asking for this shit. I'm yeah. only coming to get the money. Yeah, why, why, why even put your life on the yeah, line? Don't go, on, do, go on to your family. Yeah, don't try me anyway. <laughs> you know, you can try the motherfucker that's coming in faking. I, I'm coming to get the money for real. Damn. So, uh, and, and I'm curious real quick. Right now, it's hard to do that now because there's a lot of surveillance, CCTV everywhere. Back then in the 80s, it won a lot of surveillance, was it? Or like, you, would you still go in masked up or? Man, look. <laughs> yeah. now, I'm just curious because like oh, no 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 this is the saying. 80s though this yeah yeah this is what I'm saying though this is what I'm saying mass <laughs> well, I ain't putting no more I ain't got time for all that shit mass I ain't putting no mass on and the reason why I ain't putting no mass on you gotta remember this is the 80s bro yeah but the all they, no they got fucking VCRs and one camera in the corner <laughs> that's it right yeah so when I take care of the business, I'm taking all that shit with me. <laughs> I'm putting the motherfucking camera down. I'm putting a VCR in the trash bag. Everything going with me. You're not worried about the person seeing you in line and putting you in the lineup. Let me ask you a question. Go ahead. If I walk up to you with a motherfucking Chrome 357 in your face, and when it's in your face, that fucking barrel is this big. Yeah. You think you're gonna remember me? No, nah, I remember that barrel. Exactly. <laughs> I remember that barrel. Exactly. Yeah. So we ain't never worrying about who's seen us, you know? But the thing about it though is, like I said, man, uh, I didn't go in bullshit. Yeah. I didn't take a lot of time. I'm coming to get the money and I'm gone. Mm. And that's just what that was. So at which point did you, um, was there a certain scenario in which you got caught? By the laws, as far as to even, you know, to get to the sentence, like, was there one robbery that just didn't go right? No robbery that didn't go right here. We just got to wait. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's the time that they come knock on your door, like, or did somebody, so, did somebody snitch you? No, man, listen, listen, man, this, this is fucked up. Yeah, talk and, about as, it. As, as, as crazy it may sound, right? Uh, and when I wasn't robbing, I didn't even have a pistol with me. I was, I was the average motherfucking Joe. It's only when I go broke, when I turn Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Only when I go broke. But if you catch me on an average day, guess what? I'm clean just like I am now. I don't see no need for a pistol, right? You weren't flossing? You weren't driving out and go BBSs on the, on the Volvo or nothing? No, nah, I ain't got time for that shit, man. Because I learned at a young age, right? I never, ever went to clubs when I was growing up. Because my pops always told me, why in the fuck you giving them your money? All they doing is playing loud music and you got hoes in there shaking their ass. You can get that when they come out of the club. You know what I'm saying? Thanks. So uh, as far as the robbery going bad, man, what happened was is, is, is real spirit right here. And I, I, I can remember like this shit was yesterday, right? Oh, man, let's talk about it. So uh, we robbed a restaurant, man. And you got to remember, I'm young, man. So uh, everything went. I don't give a fuck what it is. If it wasn't nailed down, I'm coming in. So we rob a restaurant, right? And uh, I go through the motherfucking drive-thru. You know what? I'm the reason why they put that motherfucking thing up on the drive-thru now. Oh, yeah. For, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Got to block, block a nigga from coming to that motherfucker. Yeah, that's me. I'm the reason why they put that bitch up. That smell of thing now. Yeah. I'm the reason why they put that up. Because when they want to slide open, that's me standing on the side. As soon as that motherfucker open, hey, hold up. Here, here we go. Back up. You know, and at that time, I wasn't wearing 225 like I am now, yeah. 6'2". So it's, it's easy. So I'm going to slither through that bitch, and uh, I'm coming through the window. Oh, man. You know? Yeah. Uh, so, man, one night, man, uh, you know, it wasn't a robbery gone bad. It was just, uh, shit, motherfucking area was hot, right? And, and we knock a restaurant down, man, and, and, and next thing you know, we, we peel off, and I heard a motherfucking... Uh, the uh, the motherfucking eagle in the sky, the chopper. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, back then, guess what they had on your hip? They had beepers, yeah. right? Yeah. So my fucking beeper is blowing up, right? My beeper blowing up. It's the same, it's the same woman that's in my life now is calling me. 
So I hear Reverend pull over at a payphone. I said, what's up? She said, please tell me that them people not looking for you. I said, I don't even know what you're talking about. She said, they got that shit all over the fucking news. <sighs> all over the Channel 11 news, right? And in my mind, I said, yeah, they looking for me. But I ain't nowhere to be found, right? Yeah. So anyway, man, long story short, man, uh, they pulled me over one day. This is the, another day. Uh, yeah. Whole different day. Okay, yeah. They pulled me over one day, right? And remember, I told you they gave me the probation. Yeah. Right? So I'm on the probation, and they asked for my fucking ID. Damn. But I ain't doing shit right now. So I gave them my ID, right? And they look it up, and the motherfucker said, oh, shit. You got a warrant out for your arrest. I said, for what? For probation violation. Oh, shit. Right? Uh, and I go to jail and never seen daylight again. Man, so just getting pulled over on a random traffic stop, uh, they violate your probation. So they've been looking for you. Yeah, for probation violation. And you, uh, of course, get picked up. You never see the daylight again. That means you go in and you got to face trial for this shit or for everything that you kind of. Yes. You got to face everything now. Yeah. So you go to trial? Yeah, I went to trial because you know what? They got a lot of jailhouse lawyers in that motherfucker, right? Mm -hmm. And. Uh, I just got out of motherfucking prison. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they said, damn, young, you don't want to go, you, you take that shit to trial, right? And so here I am, I'm listening to them. I know I'm guilty as fuck. And uh, I said, well, fuck it. I'm going to take them to trial. They offered me 35 years damn, for, yeah. the, for the robbery, right? Because like I said, what happened was is, is they reopened the case and yeah. on the deferred adjudicated. And they said, well, you know, if you get found guilty, Oh, you stand a chance at getting a life sentence, right? So, but my nuts this big, because I've been getting away, right? And I'm on a tank with all these motherfucking jailhouse laws. Man, fuck that shit. Take it to court. Take it to court. Take it to court. So, okay. My tough ass took it to court. And uh, I got found guilty, man. Well, I, I'm just curious. Were you surprised you were found guilty? Yeah, I, actually, I was surprised because they didn't have no, they didn't have no evidence yeah. to put me at the crime. And all the witnesses said that the individual that robbed the, uh, the fast food joint had one goal too, right? Yeah. And of course, I was broke as a motherfucker. State appointed lawyer, you know? Yeah, that's what, yeah. Get, it. That's what, that's what get it done. Yeah, right but see, that's why I say the average street nigga can't show you $10,000 and ask me how I know, because I was one of them street niggas that couldn't show you $10,000. <laughs> $10, $10, when cash. I needed it at the time. Yeah, nigga. when I needed it at the time, I done fucked it all off. So now, uh, I'm in jail. Uh, with a bullshit ass state appointed lawyer, and uh, he did his best. That's all I can say. But the reason why I know they didn't have shit, because they said the person that committed the robbery had one goal too, which I mm. did, right? But I had three other more goal too, too, to go with the shit. Damn. But the person they said committed the robbery had one goal too. That was my only way out. Of course, that motherfucking judge say. So, hold on, wait. So, both lawyers give a closing argument. Yes. Who gave the better one? Your lawyer or the, uh, or the state's lawyer? The state. Damn, so he just did a better job yeah. from when, damn. They, yeah, so they, uh, they buried me. Damn. And uh, they asked me if I want the judge to sentence me or the jury to sentence me, right? Yeah. But you know that shit upstairs still playing in my head. So I said, yeah. you know what, get to the jury. Worst mistake in my whole fucking life. No, I, I'm not gonna lie to you. How, the jury, who was it? The women, men, white, black, like from what you remember, who was it mostly? Just remember a bunch of women, uh, black men, white women? Black. Of course it was motherfucking predominantly white. But predominantly white. Was it women, more majority women or men that men. you saw? Men. So you so knowing that was your jury, you put your faith in their hands versus uh was it a white judge? Uh, I'm assuming. I just, I mean I know I know where no, names. No, 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 no. Oh, go on, go on. It's gonna fuck you up. Oh, I'm gonna shit. tell you. And, and it's a it's a known figure judge, right? Man, it was let's a go. well it was a well known figure judge that fucks over blacks. R.I.P. right now, because he's dead. Fucking uh Larry Baraka. Oh man. Have any one y'all heard of him? No. I have not heard that name, no. Never? Yeah. Never. Well, he the motherfucker that'll take somebody's pocket as far as chains and throw it up in the air and say, whatever I put out of my pocket, this is how much time you get. Damn. So if he took, took the change out of his pocket a quarter and flip it in the air and bring it back down, that means you're getting 25 years. Damn. Right? Uh, 
Everybody in Dallas, Texas know Larry Baraka. Damn. Yeah. So uh, I'm about to look him up for myself. I, I, yeah, I got I, yeah. I, I to I look at his. Hate it. So you knew not to go with him. You knew like basically he's that I right. knew not to fuck with him. Right? And uh, shit, that motherfucker came. The jury came back. And that motherfucker said, well, have, you know, they went through their spiel and say, well, you know, long story short, shit, we sentenced you to life. Damn, man. Yeah. So there I went. Now I'm sitting in the motherfucking county jail and uh, with the big red clown nose on. Yeah. Because all these motherfuckers laughing at me now. You well, know? You're, tw well, you're, you're 21 at this time. I ain't even 21. Oh, you're not even, damn. I'm fucking 19. Yeah, so you're 19. So when they throw that, when they throw that life sentence at you, just I'm just curious. Do you process it? Like, do you process what it is? Like, what do you process? Nah, 19. Hell no. Exactly. Hell no. All I could do is guess what? Just one foot in front of you, huh? <laughs> just one foot in front of you, and just, just. Uh, it was dark, man. Yeah. Everything in front of me was dark. Was your mama there? Uh, no, no, ain't no mama. Mama got killed in 81. Oh, man. Mama got murdered in 81. Damn. So, Condolences. Uh, life sentence, 19. Can I process? Hell no. And, but I didn't act like they thought I was going to act. So they put me back on the elevator, take me back upstairs. I got all type of fucking laws, you know, around me, whatever, man, you know. But I'm trying to hold a persona up, right? Yeah, nigga, but inside I'm I'm fucked up. Yeah. You know, my whole inside is fucked up. You know, so uh, I go back upstairs to the tank, man. But you know, in the dark, guess what I'm asking myself? Yeah. Where is mama? Ain't no mama. Nah, for real. You know, and, and and I'm crying like a motherfucker. Man, that's some real shit. You know, I'm I, I'm I'm crying, but I ain't letting them people on that fucking tank see me cry. Yeah. You know, so uh, that's where the life sentence come from, man. There's always a stigma in which we talk to a lot of people who've done time where um, they expect or they, from what they see either in movies or what they told from people who already been to prison, came back home of how you're supposed to act like the first day you get in there, first week, uh, stay on your ground, you know, hit somebody when you walk in. Um, you're 19 and you're going to an adult prison. Uh, first of all, where did they send you first and foremost? Like, yeah, let, let's, let, let's talk about it. Where, where'd you go off the rip? You got to remember, I don't get the life sentence on the second trip. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Right? You're right. right. I've not already been to prison, so I know what it's like. Yeah. Now, if we want to go back to 85, that first trip is where they sent every youngster at, oh. the Ferguson unit. Ah, so you went to Ferguson unit as a youngster yeah. on the first trip. On the first trip. Since this is your second bit, tell me how you're, because again, everyone, I, I'm just curious, but you, your first day in, like, you know, once they close them doors, they process, you You kind of see who you're about to see for the next however many years. Um, how did you handle the first day in? On the first trip, right? Uh, man, I was terrified. Not because of uh, what I knew, it's because I what, what I didn't know. Uh, this motherfucker is lit up, man. And, 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 it's, and it's the the sounds, you know, the sounds and sights of what you see. And, I have, and, and, you're the first person to ever say that, man. The sounds. Yeah, the sounds, just, of, the sounds and sights of what you're seeing is scary. Yeah. Imagine being in the motherfucking jungle and you human and all these fucking animals out here. Mm. You know you out of your motherfucking zone. This ain't your habitat, That's right? right. So I'm hearing all this shit, right? And this is, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that it's crazy, but reality sets in, you know? Yeah. And, and, and it's like, nigga, you made it. No, nigga, you been made it. You know, yeah. you, you made it, your bed was made when you was doing what you was doing in the street. So the fear of a, another man inside of prison, that shit what they posed on me, right? But I never ever feared another man because I always know I can protect myself at all times, right? But it was it it, it was the fear of the people. What uh what how, you you're like what six two at this time? What about how much you weigh? Like, no, what? I wasn't no six two. Oh, you weren't there yet. No, I'm probably five ten. 
Five ten. Uh, one sixty five. Oh man, soaking wet. Three goals in my mouth. Oh, and my skin is a lot lighter. Yeah, looking the part. Yeah, looking the part yeah. to niggas that's in there. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Oh yeah, this nigga chow time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So uh, you know, most niggas gonna say, "How them niggas gonna looking at me like that?" But I'm yeah, they they looking. Yeah. They just ain't saying nothing. You know, and uh, niggas was looking because that's what they do. Yeah, do niggas say like? Whatever nigga want to pose, what he want to like, you know, bully, whatever you want to do, do niggas like do, when the nigga get in prison, do, are niggas friendly like that? Like approaching niggas that are brand new the day of, like multiple niggas coming like, like put it like this: if a nigga that goes to prison right now today, does he expect to have to talk to niggas the moment he gets in there? Like just, I got to start talking to niggas. Uh, being as though man, I can I can kind of speak for that because I only been out eleven years now, right? Yeah. So, uh, it's way more friendly now. Uh, Super friendly. If you don't want to talk to a motherfucker, you ain't got to. Yeah. You know, you can just get your shit and go to your cell. You ain't never got to come out. Yeah. You know, but it's in your best interest to come out unless you're going to start it there. <laughs> but uh, as far as somebody approaching you, nah, ain't, ain't nobody doing that shit. But then when I went, oh yeah, they want to know, they want to know about you. Damn. You know, they want where you from, how much time you got, okay. you know, uh, what you going to do? In other words, the term was used with this when I was there, man. Uh, can you fight? Uh, and if you, of course, if you say, yeah, you're going to get tested then. Right there. Okay. If you say no, well, here you go, nigga. This is what I need when you go come say it right here. You know, it was it, it was such thing. It was it was it was a saying where it was like, uh, "You gonna fight? You gonna fuck? Or you gonna bust a 60? Yeah. And that meant if you agree to them terms, then you a hoe. Yeah. You get whatever you got coming. And there was a lot of niggas in them will fuck you straight up. How did the debt system work? Like, where you owe a nigga? Like, hey, I'm a, I'm gonna give you this. Now you owe me. Like, how did that work? Or if you know, if you don't pay back, like, it seemed like a, you know, and I'm, I'm again, I ain't been in. I, I might have seen county, but I ain't been in no oh, prison. I'm gonna give it to you. So, yeah, how does the like do niggas do shit to make a nigga owe him? Like, hey, I'm gonna give you this up front because you don't know better, but now you owe me. Yes, that shit is real. You know, I heard a story. Nigga say a nigga put a snicker in a nigga bed or some shit like that. And then had the nigga uh, eat the snicker, and he got him. Yeah, cause you know, the, the thing about it though, man, is 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 when you go down there, right? You ain't got no money on the book yeah. until somebody send you something. Thanks. So you practically broke, you know. <laughs> and that and that hustle from the street, it don't count down there, yeah. cause you don't know how to hustle. You're in a whole new environment, right? So you have to be taught how to hustle down here, right? Yeah. So your yeah, niggas will trick you like that. Hey, hey, homie, uh, you hungry? Of course they're gonna say, yeah. Because <laughs> you you hungry. Yeah. You know, yeah. niggas get hungry in that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and uh they're gonna serve you. No, you can't pay, they already know you can't pay them back. You know, so uh, you know, they're gonna let the time pass by, they let the time pass by, and and and, and now you're gonna get approached. Yeah. You know. And he was like, say, man, uh, but but it's it's like interest now. The yeah. shit, the shit doesn't went up. Without you know, without you signing off on it. You exactly. Just... <laughs> so now that one suit, that motherfucker done turned into 20. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Damn. And you know you ain't got no money, so you can't pay it. Right? And and that's what you're gonna get asked. Well, you know you owe me, right? Yeah, yeah. I know I owe you one suit. No, nigga, you owe me 20. But man, I can't pay it. Yeah, you can pay it. How the fuck I'm gonna pay it? Now this is the nigga that's that's like booty. You know? Yeah, you got something that you can pay it with. Yeah. You know? And you lame as fuck. You still going through the motion. You know? Yeah. And then when you fall for it, nigga say, man, for fall in my house, I'll I holler at you. Come to my cell, I'll talk to you. You don't know no better. Damn. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna go right in that cell and it's over with for you. Is this a game that old niggas will play on young niggas that- Exactly. Get, damn. Old niggas gonna get, hey, hey man, listen to this. 
I ain't met an old nigga that haven't got a young nigga since I was there. Damn. Them niggas are expert booty bandits. Mm. And, and that's facts. You know, uh, and that was the game. You know? Yeah, now the fact that you said and they don't even know it, they'll give it to you up front and wait. Not tell you next day and you know, no, no, they, they don't wait. wait. Shit, we can wait days, weeks, months, and yes. they tell you, you know, your uh shit from that last. Yeah. So yeah. Did, did normally, and this again, um, is of course, you know, you got every race in prison. Did you see normally blacks taking advantage of Mexicans and whites or whites taking advantage of blacks? Uh, in this scenario, like when you come in, just fresh meat. Was the blacks taking advantage of blacks? Like, did it stay within, uh, within you know, black people, or did it go like, hey, nah, you see that new white boy, that new Mexican, blacks is on it, or just it's all over the place? Look, a white boy, Mexican, and other races ain't never ran shit. Mm. Never ran shit. Blacks create all the rules. Damn. They create every rule that's in prison, right? So uh, as far as whoever get charged up when they come to the door, it's gonna be by a black. Mm. You know, come on, man. You, do, you, do you see a white boy come to you and say, "Hey, you gonna ride?" Nah, like nah. A black nah. man. After the eighties, nah. A oh, nigga, man. Sixties, uh, uh, seventies, I could tell you, yeah, probably they probably still on that, you know, on that mentality. Yeah. But after the eighties, nah, 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 nah. No, nah, they, 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 ain't, they ain't coming to no black to yeah. ask him, you know, what they gonna do because the weakest black can whoop the one, the, the strongest white. Nick. You know, so they're going to get out of the way. You know, it's going to always be a black coming to you. You know, it's, it's kind of like, man, uh, uh, it's like when you're putting in work in the world, right, and you transition to prison, everybody's putting in work. So the strongest motherfucker in the world become the weakest motherfucker in prison. You see what I I'm saying? That. Yeah, no, I feel that. Uh, nobody, because it's, 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 it's like, no rules against nobody. Everybody yeah. gets tried. Ain't no social standard. Ain't no ain't middle. None of, that yeah, it's just... none of that. You ain't coming in with no respect. I'm no <laughs> fucking crip. I'm no. I don't give a fuck what you is. Yeah, it's man I'm, to man. I'm looking at you as a bitch. Yeah. And this is what that is. What's some of the? What's the one of the worst things you've seen while you was while you was down? One of the worst things. <laughs> one of the worst things I seen while I was down. Right. So. Uh, it was a time to have free weights, universal weights in prison. Yeah. You know, and you know, motherfucker was big, bro. Nobody was small. <laughs> you know, and on top of that, they brought the the supplements in, which was creatine, worst mistake they could have ever made. Was that a, a food sample? Yeah, creatine. No, creatine, something to enlarge your body. Oh shit! Okay. To make you get bigger and stronger, Damn. right? Damn. They don't have that no more, do they? No, and this is the reason why they took it out. I'm going to give you that reason why they took it out, because dudes were getting big, man. They was getting bigger than the officers. Oh, hell yeah. Right? Uh, and they started taking advantage of the weaker inmates. So you have motherfuckers that like to rape dudes, right? Yeah. So if you a, a, a small figure dude, and this motherfucker weighs 230, 245, dead lifting 600 pounds. What's your defense against him? I got to kill you. I mean, you got you got to kill him. You got to kill him. Yeah, you're going to do one, one or two things. You're going to kill him or you're going to let him fuck you. Right? right? And most dudes that go to prison ain't no fucking killers. They only killers in the street. That part. They not gonna stab yeah, nobody. Yeah, long prison. range gun shooting, none, none personal. Yeah, none. They not prison. Gonna, you got to get personal. They, up and close. Mm. Ain't no running from this shit, right? So uh, they know, and, and it's, it's you know nobody wants to stab nobody in prison because you can't run and hide. Yeah. You know, there's a penalty for that shit too, and nobody wants to face that. You know, so uh, that's the worst thing, man. Damn. It was a lot of dudes that got fucked, man, but not on their cause, though. So they stopped it because of, like, just the overpower. Men were overpowering younger, just men, based on who was in, in the officers. And officers. Nobody, nobody could control the bigger inmates. If you get a major use of force on an inmate, you can't take me down. 
yeah. because I'm way bigger than you. So they took the creatine out of the system and they took the free weights out and they only left the, the weights on the rec yard, which is the universal set. It's, it's the whole, you know, the set that's tied to it. Yeah. What, you know, where you can, you can reach uh, your maximum, you know, size, but you can't get big as if you was lifting free weights like in the world. Exactly. So the worst thing you seen was uh that no. Yeah, no, no, go go ahead. I, I, you about to say you about to explain what it was. Uh the worst thing I've seen, man, besides that was uh my homeboy got stabbed in the day room. And uh Did he deserve it, from what you know? I ain't never seen a man that did deserve to die in prison if a motherfucker sticking. Okay. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> go, so, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, somebody you knew. This is this your yeah, partner. It's a present friend of mine, right? Yeah. And uh, he got into an altercation, man. And and ninety percent of the time, when you get in an argument, and if you don't move first, that means you'll be the first one to die. Yeah. You know, because you know you know where you're at. You know, and when somebody says this is what's going to happen, and you don't move, then that shit is going to happen to you. You say it's like 90% of the time, you say? 90%. Damn. You know, uh, because, it's, you know, like I said, man, it's, it was, uh, then, it was a lot of killers in there. So when people make threats in prison, it's best likely to take it serious. Yeah. You Not, take, there ain't no light threats. No, 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 no. You, you, you either take care of them, or they're going to take care of you. Shit. And he was new. And he got into an altercation. That's what I tell you. That shit from the street don't work in here. That shit don't travel with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you have to do what you say you're going to do. It's like bringing a motherfucking knife to a gunfight. Who you think going to win? Come on now. Exactly. <laughs> Come on now. What's the worst thing that you, that you had to do while you was down there? The worst thing I had to do? Yeah. The worst thing I had to do, man, was do what I just described. Uh, what, what part of that? Uh, that know? motherfucker, I had to, I had to put him off, break his plate. Yeah. I had to send him motherfucker home to whoever he belonged to. Mm. You know, and I'm not gonna say it was the worst thing I had to do because if I don't do it, I'm not doing this. No facts, facts. Um. Uh, uh, and I gotta ask you because overall, in 25 years, again, you got a life sentence. Yeah. And this is just this is in general. How did you survive? Uh, and this is Ferguson unit. Any other units you was at? Yeah. It's pretty much all Ferguson that you no, did? No, I was on three other, un two three other, other units. Two other units. Well, how did you survive? If, if you were just to give a blanket statement as far as for 25 years, how did you make it through? Because again, you still see here, you look healthy, mind, mind intact. I'm sure you've seen solitary. I'm sure you, you've seen the, the worst of the worst of all, all the prisons. What did you do to survive overall? Uh... The saying is true, mind over matter, right? Okay. You, you put the matter to the side and you work on the mind because the mind is what controls the body, right? Yeah. And uh, what helped me survive was I, had to, I cut the world off. Did you cut uh, inmates off? Were you to yourself? No. Or you That's like? A, no. Okay, so you cut the world off, so yes. outside world don't exist. Yes. Uh, brothers, sisters, hope y'all doing good. Yeah. Like, hope y'all, you know, mama already gone. Yeah. Daddy, I don't know where he at, but hope y'all doing good. Girl, wh whatever female you was talking to, y'all good. You're, this is your world now. Facts. And you, like you said, you weren't to yourself, so that means you, you're running some shit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you created a system for you to make, for you to pass time. You are in a system. Already in the system. You're in the system. You just have to learn the politics of the system, right? And it's not easy for everybody to learn the politics of the system. What I mean by politics of the system, except that you're not going back home for a long time, man. Get that shit out of your head. You know, you can't be in two places at one time. You can, but in there, it ain't good for you because you're going to wind up taking psychotic drugs and you're going to be fucked, right? So uh, life centers, right? A lot of dog days. You 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 have any appeals? You find you are you throwing appeals out there? Or all that, no, all that shit got all that got exhausted. Oh you damn! Know? 
I did what I did. So wait, so you had you had some appeals in the in life. Yeah, so you I had, mean, that, I appeal this shit. Yeah, that that gets you some hope, at least a, a glimmer of hopefully this appeal might go through. Something may happen. Maybe the maybe the judge was corrupt or something to keep you kind of hoping that you might get something. You know, Lord might come on your side and say, "Here, who? Uh, I, I want to say the Lord. Who God. you say? I said God. It may, God. He, yeah, yeah. he don't exist. Uh, it, not not in this motherfucking situation. Ooh, man. So you saying those who go into prison religious could lose all that based on the exactly. world that's set up. Exactly. Damn. Because, listen to this. No offense for people that has faith and believe in God and all that, right? But it's Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. Uh, it took him to the cross, thorns on the head, bleeding from head to toe, right? Yeah, at 33 years old. Exactly. On this earth, he walked this earth, right? Mm -hmm. And all that shit happened to him. If I'm God, I'm not coming back down to fucking with nobody. Y'all figure it out. I hear the prayers, but they ain't gonna be answered. Cause I'm not coming back down here. Y'all blew it, in other words. So, uh, and that's no offense to people that believe in that. But when you're in a situation, man, it's, it's, it's self-preservation is the first law of nature now. Because the, the parole board, the people in prison, meaning inmates, they don't give a fuck about no God, bro. You living with rapists, killers, murderers. You think they pray before they break in your motherfucking cell and steal all of your shit? Ain't nobody praying down here. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody doing none of that. They say that prison, they treat people worse than animals. Did you? What do you say to that? In some scenarios, they do. But I've never ever seen a man didn't put himself in a position to get treated like that. Right. And uh, you got a lot of people that hate TDC officers. Right? Yeah. But I'm not one of them. Oh, you didn't you didn't have no COs that you that I hated? Yeah. Nah. Did you befriend did you befriend them at least in cordial conversation? I had to. Yeah. This is my this is these are my people. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This, this is the system. Right? <laughs> these are my people. But you have to learn that. That's what I meant. This is the shit that you have to learn. Mm. I can't hate you because you the motherfucker that's feeding me. Right? Yeah. Female, I can't hate you because you're gonna be the motherfucker that I'm trying to fuck. <laughs> right? And yeah, why fuck that up? <laughs> yeah. So, but but people that's coming down there with the hate mentality of COs as if they the one that put them there. But on the back end of that shit, if you don't rob that store, you don't come into my world. That's real. Did you ever have a relationship with a CO? When I say relationship, I mean like an ongoing situation. Is that a rhetorical question? Oh, come on. Yeah. You know, 25 years. <laughs> We're going to make it rhetorical. Okay. Um, no, hey, it's funny. We had a we had a dude that came here. Um, shout out Finesse Kenny. He said he did he did a little time. Uh, he had a situation with a CEO. Um, the husband found out about it, you know, the 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 and was like threatened to kill him. Uh somehow, I don't know, he had a he actually had a plot to kill him in jail. Like he actually went all like was going through it. He heard about the plot and you know, he, I guess he, you know, it, he got, it got averted, but that's how serious his relationship with that person was. Yeah. Did you have a situation where it's yeah, hey, CEO and then you know, nigga, you, I mean, you ain't going nowhere, but no. she has something outside that might come in and fuck up what y'all got going on. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna happen. <laughs> so you know, female get to say your name and but outside of that. I will say this though, man. Uh, I can't not say what a person didn't do or what he did do, right? But on a unit, it's probably, what, 22, 2200 men on the unit, right? Yeah. And each shift, as far as female, mm, if it's fully staffed, right, you might have 25, 30 females on the ranch, right? And it takes a special dude yeah. 
<laughs> to convince a motherfucker to fuck with you when you ain't got nothing. Right? Right. That's facts. And everybody ain't going to have no female. Right? Yeah. Because everybody ain't got what it takes. Yeah. And that's the part I was telling you about, the, the political part of it. You have to learn that. I don't give a fuck how fucking handsome you is or fucking how big you is. None of that shit because I done seen the ugliest nigga with the baddest bitch on the unit. Damn. Like what, what, it, does it take any outside source? Like, hey, I'm going to have somebody outside put some money in your bank account. Uh, we're going to make... Like, does, does it take a lot or does it take good game? Just... Or just... It just well, every, well, well, every situation is different. You, you can't have a motherfucking curse the gal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have a curse of gal. You got to really have a gift of gal yeah. to get a motherfucker to fuck out $2,600 a month yeah. to fuck with you and you don't have a dime. Man. Right? And I've been on the internet 12 times. Geez, I've been on the internet 12 times just running it up. Damn. Yeah. I've Wait, been, I'm just curious, is, is, is married CEOs easier than, sing, than one, women who don't have a ring on their finger? Man, a woman is a woman, man. They don't, they don't give a fuck if they married or not. It's the same so it don't, way. it don't matter who, like, hey, it's, married or not. It's yeah. the same way like in the world. A motherfucker yeah. will cheat. It's, it's more easy for them to cheat with me in prison than to cheat in the free. That's what I'm saying. I would think a married woman would be easy to, this just makes more sense. You already got your at home, your, 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 your nigga taking care of things. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just something at work. Yeah. <laughs> but what I'm saying, it's the same as if you was in the world. That's true. What I mean by that is that uh, we can be on Mars. If a woman like you, she going to fuck with you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. Just, that's what I'm saying. It's the same way in the world. When she come through the door, she got 3,200 motherfuckers she can like. Mm. She get the pickings. Imagine that. And ain't none of these niggas went nowhere. You know what I'm saying? All yeah. these niggas do is do push-ups all day, sit-ups all day, pull-ups all day, play basketball all day. So these niggas is everything that they look at, look at in the magazine. Did you ever have to uh, sit in solitaire? What? And, and I, these, these questions may sound rhetorical, but we, we're going to get there. How, how much time was your most time you've done in solitaire? Oh, uh, in one, in one, like, one, one stint, probably 45 days, because I was under investigation. Oh. Uh. Um, we talked to a young guy who was, uh, he did a long time in solitary. He's like, um, you gotta be, when you in solitary and ain't nobody talk to except for a seat that might serve you some food, you gotta talk to yourself while you in there. Cause otherwise you may lose your mental. You gotta, you gotta have something to count bricks, uh, something in repetition to keep you going. How did you get through your solitary time for yourself? As far as what you do to get past? I did a lot of push ups, sit ups, uh, I ain't gonna start reading no books, so that'll be a damn lie. Uh, I looked out the window, cause there's a window right there in the solitary I was in, right? Okay, okay. And uh, I wrote fucking kites, and a kite is, is fucking letters. Yeah. But it was going to fucking female CEOs in population. Yeah, but I say, yeah, how did you get the kite out in, in, in solitary? Was, uh, well, I got partners that worked okay. back there. Okay. So my shit didn't stop. Ah, okay. You know? Uh, did you have did you have access to books and so like yeah but I ain't got time for no book I mean <laughs> fuck a book I read that shit later on down the line when, yeah. when, when you know when, when right now I'm playing you see what I'm saying right right I'm playing right now I'm having fun yeah I'm in solitary but I'm in solitary for the game that I'm in right yeah which is I'm in investigation for an inappropriate relationship with an officer oh. but my thing is this. Uh, the officers still in population. See, that's the game they played. You know? Yeah. The system played that game. We take him away from the population, then we work on who? The weaker part, which is the woman. Yeah. See, if we can get her to break, we got him. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, you yeah, you away. Yes. So that's the game they played. So I ain't got time to read books because I still got to, you know, I got to run a fucking organization back here. So I got to keep this shit on paper going to her. Let not know, hey, this is the next move. Facts. You know? Whatever came of that situation? Did, did... Oh, I got out of that shit. Okay, okay. Did she she said she still kept her job or? And yeah. Oh. And, <laughs> and guess what happened? And when that happened? The party continued? No, yeah, it continued. But 
the shit that I was putting down was really putting down. <laughs> you know why? Because like, whoa, this nigga ain't doing no snitching. Yeah, he actually solid and look at shit yeah. back to it. Yeah, so I'm fucking with him. It's over for everybody else. I don't need nobody else. Oh yeah. You see what I'm saying? Oh yeah. So when they think they hurt you, they really helping you. But it all depends on who they fucking with. And, you know? Did, did they ever try experiments on y'all that you feel like with food or like for your daily regimen? Like we had somebody uh, by the name of uh, Sosa came in here and said he didn't have to eat what other inmates ate. He fucked when he wanted. He made it seem he made it seem like a vacation or something. Okay. Uh, okay. What 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 um. Do, as do. far as what did you like with food wise, uh, shit, man? Like you know, is it? Hold up, let, let's run that back. You say you said what? Yeah, it was, the, a guy came in here and said, man, he made it seem like, from his standpoint, he had it together. He didn't have to eat the normal food that everybody ate. He fucked. He seemed seemingly when he wanted, uh, and he kind of ran. You know, he had a he had a shit together in there. Basically, he didn't have to do what other inmates did. He he was more, it was an easier ride, it seemed like. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to speak for him, but it seemed like an easier ride based on being able to do, you know, certain things. Not even eating what the normal niggas eat. Okay. Uh, my first question, was he in Texas? Ooh. Nah, nah, nah. nah. He wasn't Texas. He was Detroit. He was up more up north. Oh, somewhere. I can't speak. I see, that's what I'm saying. Okay, okay. I can't speak to that because I ain't never been to Detroit prison. Now, if he'd have been here... I'd, <laughs> I'd have been the first person to tell me you a motherfucking lie. Mm. But yeah. you in Detroit, so you get a pass. Yeah. yeah. So in Texas, is that bad? You don't have no special privilege. You have to eat. How, what is a, and I'm not, I'm just saying this is just for yeah. new, because people are on it now. This people who's, I am a vegan. I don't eat, you know, protein. I don't eat meat. What, like they, can they do that? Come into prison? Like they got an option to say, I just want to eat. Vegan food, like I want to eat just not no meat, just the vegetables on the sides and shit. Oh yeah, you got a privilege to eat what you want to eat because you get a tray when you go to child. <laughs> they gonna give you a tray, but all the people that I know that eat no fucking meat look like that fucking uh that tripod right there. Then <laughs> 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 so you, you die fuck. slowly, but <laughs> yeah, you know, and, 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 and they might try that shit two or three months, the next thing you know, when well, they have meat and child, and then you pull up on them and say, damn, I thought she didn't eat meat. He said, yeah, I tried that shit, it didn't work, man. Yeah, you ain't in no motherfucking free world where you can substitute that shit. What, what was the biggest commodity in prison? Like, what was the biggest thing a nigga could sell in prison? Like, uh, whether cigarettes, whether uh, shit, uh, I mean, what was the biggest thing like that goes, that go, that, that that's like, if you got it, it's gold? Uh, any kind of country band, namely, uh, uh, with me because I possessed all that shit, you know, so I, did, I, I couldn't tell what sold better or what sold less because I had all the shit. Yeah. You know, I had every I had everything they had in the world. Damn. You know, from fucking, uh, I smoked more weed in prison than I did in the free world. And it's crazy because I don't even smoke out here. Damn. But I smoked in there. I smoked Kush every fucking day. And they had cushion. they had cushion there. So, uh, but if I, had, if I had to answer it, I'd say cigarettes. And the reason why cigarettes, why? Because everybody's stressing. Is there any sympathy for a person to come in there and he says, he complains, man, I, man I'm depressed or I got anxiety or... Yeah, he got, <laughs> is there a sympathy for him? Yeah. Yeah, when he go up with the rest of them depressed ass niggas. Oh, there's a group, there's a group of them. Yeah, it's a group of them niggas coming up with their weak ass shit, you know? <laughs> uh, but but a motherfucker that's been in there and, you know, done adapt to it, I mean, you'll hear it, but you ain't no answer for that shit. You know, and it ain't too many motherfuckers uh, patting you on the back. So that's gonna be all right. No, man, I don't give a fuck about you. You gotta do that shit. You got it, you gotta do it. Damn. You know? Do, do y'all have access to magazines? Uh, I ain't gonna say porno mags, but like, you know. Oh, they had them too for a minute. Oh, for real, back in the early 90s? What is this? They had them in the early 90s and all this. Man, motherfuckers ain't, yeah, it was all right, but motherfuckers ain't jacking off on no magazine. <laughs> they jacking off on hoes now. Yeah, yeah, nigga, they real. jacking off on the women. On the men. Yeah, for real. Yeah, hey, who, who, who wants to, fuck, like, motherfucker wants to see something moving. Yeah, it's got that magazine. You, know, you gonna put all that grease on your motherfucking hand and turn the page in the book? <laughs> Marie, Marie, <laughs> said bring the female. Yeah, we want the female. Bring them through, man. You know that's what that's that's what that is. Ain't no, you know. I mean, you can get them new people. Say, man, y'all got any books? Books, nigga, please. Yeah. 
back to the like the robberies before you got in there. Did you ever feel um like sorry for any of the uh, the victims or anything that when you when you committed your crimes? <laughs> the answer. Uh, did you, that, did you ever feel victim. sorry? The for victim? The, yeah, for the victim. You want me to be honest? Yeah, I want you to be honest. No. Nah. I ain't feel sorry for him. I just, I ain't. He's in the way, huh? I ain't, yeah, you in the, that's just, I'm just, you know, I'm just here to do a job. That's the way I looked at it. And if you, and if you serve your purpose right, then it, the, the, what, it won't happen to you that happened to the last person. Although it's gonna happen anyway. So after I left there, right, uh, I never got in the car and thought about those people. Mm. That's how fucked up I was. Did you ever think about karma or anything like that? Yeah, it was already on me. I'm, I'm already broke. What's the goddamn hey, so I'm already broke. <laughs> Where the fuck this shit come from? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing, trying to get the shit away. Yeah, so, shit. Yeah, you know, I thought about it, man, but, you know, hindsight 2020. Would you, would, would you think about karma if you just went inside a motherfucking hotel and, 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 and you got $30,000? What you going to be thinking about the $30,000 or the karma? <laughs> yeah, I hit 30, 30 grand on my mind like a motherfucker. <laughs> on my mind. Facts. So I gotta ask, um, you know, uh how how well, let's just stay on Ferguson unit for a second, because that's a big topic of conversation with the OG Percy's that we had kryptonite up here. Oh, we ain't tripping uh, on that, man. Yeah, we had a lot of people talking about uh Ferguson unit and the situation. And uh I must speak to Kryptonite's interview because he said there was a situation where Ferguson was from the nineties, uh, you know, the early two thousand, then it switched up. Later, it seemed like you. What? What? At what time frame did you uh, uh, go to? Fer were you in Ferguson Unit? Uh, because when I came back, right, uh, I went to Beto One first. Yeah. Do, um, when I came back with the life sentence, right, uh, I did five years over there. Okay. And uh, they shipped me from Beto One for. Uh, where's Beto? Where's that at? Uh, what? Uh, that's in uh, Tennessee College. Okay. They shipped me from B-01 for participating in uh, organized crime. Oh, damn. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm a fucking criminal. <laughs> Simple as that. When from, was, uh, when from, was, from, from the boys home. <laughs> yeah. You say, yeah, you've been, yeah, you been organizing into some crime. Yeah, exactly. You know, I'm, I am an orchestrator. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, uh, or at least I'm not no fucking follow. <laughs> yeah, at least, for real. Y'all, it's trying to be something greater than. Ain't no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, uh, I did five years over there, man, and uh, I was shipped to Ferguson Union, you know, and I did 10 over there. This is uh, from what to what? Uh, what'd you say, like what, 95? From, 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 90, from 90 to 95, I was on veto. Yeah. And from then I was sent to the Ferguson Union for 10 years. Mm. Yeah. I stayed on that 10 years on this life sentence right here. Yeah. So to speak to that, what you just said, as far as, the transition from, from physical to mental? Is yeah. that what you're asking? Yeah, more so, not say with the Ferguson unit have like a before and after, like the way it was until maybe some events happened to where they are, right, we got to switch it up. And it's a different Ferguson unit than what it was from, let's say, the early 90s going into like uh, mid 2000s, stuff like that. Uh, I have to say yes, because, you know, it, it, was a, it was a point and period of time where it was a, uh, I call it no, a no layup rule policy. Mm. In other words, nobody was saving nobody. You know, and you was getting tried and tested every day. Damn. You know, and, and people didn't give a fuck about your reputation. You know, who are you? Well, I'm from, okay, well, I need to take a look at you to, to see if you're gonna stand in solidarity with the blacks. I don't give a fuck about you, no crib or no blood, none of that shit. Mm. We don't care nothing about that. We wanna know. When it go down, if you're gonna be on the black side, yeah. So uh, at some time at point, man, it moved away from that, you know. And you had a lot of Crips and Bloods coming in, but they was only coming in. Uh, from my perspective, uh, they were still they still thought they was in the streets. They switched from the rags in the world to wearing fucking uh, rosaries. Oh, the you rosaries know? meant something. Yeah, uh, the Bloods wore red rosaries and the Crips blow blue rosaries. You know, but it wasn't, it wasn't never no action behind that shit. <laughs> you know, 
it's kind of like when they're in the world and how they clash and all that and they throw up all these motherfucking fake ass sets and all that shit, right? But when they come down there, ain't no more throwing up no fucking sets. Uh, ain't nobody busting nobody head or ain't nobody, ain't no more ops and all that shit. All that shit disappear. Man. You know, you just, you just one person, you know, and that respect shit didn't follow you, man. So, uh, I had to say, yes, it switched over, yeah. you know, it, it got watered down. And, uh, what, what, for somebody coming on Ferguson unit, let's say 21 years old, committed, Arm robbery, didn't kill nobody, just committed an armed robbery, you know what I'm saying, and just got a bad deal. Let's say he 5'8", like you said, 165. Um, already looking like, you know, like nigga, he, he, it, this could be a sweet situation. What, what, like, what does he do when he walks in, like, to say, man, I ain't want nobody to fuck with me. I'm trying to do this time, not let this time do me. I ain't about, I ain't about to be nobody punk. I ain't nigga, because they come in blind. What does a person like that do? Because he's young too. Like there's old niggas that's been in there 10 years already. What does a young 21 year old fresh, fresh to Ferguson unit don't weigh that much, you know what I'm saying? Probably maybe had three fights in his life. What does he do to, to not go through that shit? Not right now or then? Then, 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 then. Oh, right then? Yeah, then. Well, you know, this yeah. is during, during your time. Like what? He ain't gonna do shit. He gonna <laughs> do what somebody tell him to do. You're saying there's no hope for a nigga. No, <laughs> it ain't. Because Shit. you got to understand one thing. These motherfuckers are sharks. They watch people come. Look, it's, it's a bench right here, right? Yeah. These niggas is like hawks. Niggas come every day or? Huh? Every day, every day. Every day, every you day some... 25 to 30 people coming off the chain bus, oh, right? And these niggas is front and center like they had a wrestling match. Picking and choose. Yes. Damn. Whispering, <laughs> Shit. you know, and they can see when you who you are. Simple as that. Ain't no. It, it, that's how it was. So a you nigga know? trying to act tough. If you, that's the worst thing you can do. Oh shit! It's try to act tough because now you calling on the baddest nigga in the day room. Yeah, now they say <laughs> big smoke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, okay. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, look out, home. <laughs> you know. What's up? And you put that old fake ass mask on. I ain't ain't nothing up. Yeah, it's something up. Bring your motherfucking ass on out here. We're gonna see what's up. So the best thing you can do, man, in my opinion, and, I, and I'm speaking from a personal standpoint, when you go in there, right? Yeah. Uh they gonna size you up, you know? And if you undersize and you, you know, red niggas got it hard. Red motherfuckers got it hard. Because these Negroes in prison, mind switch is they fucked up. They when they look at you, they ain't looking at no Negro. They is looking at a motherfucking woman. Damn. That's how fucked up they, they mind is. So when you come in at that time when you young, right? Uh the worst thing you can do, man, even if you is scared, don't act like you're scared. You know? Mm. And you know when motherfucker approach you, man, you don't have to answer. If you want to survive. You just go right to that cell and you find your motherfucking knife if you ain't scared to stab. Yeah. But the majority of people at that time is scared to stick somebody. So they wind up right here beside whoever they, you know. Yeah, so, so, so was there a situation where you seen a nigga come in, he looked tough, and then let's say two days later, two days later, you see that nigga like, oh, that, that nigga. Oh, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Biggest yeah. nigga on the ranch. I done seen that. Damn. <laughs> Biggest nigga on the ranch, right? Damn. Uh, you'll be surprised how many big motherfuckers come through that that can't fight. Everything is like they still in motherfucking preschool. <laughs> like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Blind. <laughs> you know, yeah, they fighting with their head down. And when you get knocked out, it's over. Damn. Yeah, because you're gonna lose, you're gonna lose confidence. And, so and, do it be like y'all just sit around and when y'all see a nigga like a nigga, uh a nigga that got his hand around a nigga now, like y'all just be like between y'all say like, oh that nigga again. Oh, uh, we ain't tripping. Yeah, they got that nigga. All yeah, right. that that I mean, it's it's this is a whole new different world <laughs> to, to somebody that comes in and see this shit. I mean, like you know, it's gonna blow their mind. Yeah, to see uh, you know, a nigga in the day room like this here, a nigga might reach over and fucking kiss the nigga in the day room. Damn. You know what I'm <laughs> Just to show a nigga like. Yeah, you know, this, yeah, yeah. This this me. Yeah. So so we had a a nigga. By the name of E Solid, come on here and see. He's, he's solid. He's, he's yeah. 
No, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's short. Yeah, and he's like probably, I say like 5'2". Yeah, 5'5". Five, 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 yeah, 5'5". Five, five. I don't know. I don't say his height, but he's small stature. And he, they said he's like, he didn't get fucked with because... I don't know exactly why. why. Yeah, nah, he, he grabbed the weapon first day. Yeah, uh, first day. Yeah, he hit niggas with weapons. Yeah, like. Because he's a small nigga, so he hit niggas with whatever weapon he could find, fucking niggas up. Yeah. I, eyeballs out of socket. So he like, I'm fucking with niggas the moment I get in here. And they somehow he got respect off of that. Like, all right, that nigga, he don't mind taking an eye out. Yeah. Off the rip. Yeah, that's, you better, you better respect that nigga. Yeah. That's the nigga, that's the nigga you, you do respect. You know what I'm saying? And you know, that's the only motherfucker that get respect. That's why I say, you know, you know, you might hear people saying, oh man, uh violence ain't yes, when you in an violent environment, you better bust a motherfucker head to the white meat. Yeah, you better bust a motherfucker head to the white meat, because if not, you're gonna get tried. You know, and it's a lot of dudes that couldn't fight, but them niggas can use their fan motor. So do niggas fight to killing that motherfucker? Like, yes, niggas fight to the death. Yeah, like when you when it start, nigga, till somebody stop me. Nigga fight to the death. Nigga, I ain't no when you fall, right? I've seen a lot of time, man, especially the white boy. When they fighting the black, when they fall, they face getting fucked up. Damn. I had a homeboy named DP was fighting the white boy in the rick yard, and when he fell, cause the white boy called him a nigga. Oh yeah. That's and when he fell. DP broke every motherfucking bone in his face. Damn. His face looked like putty when they came to get him. And all fucking DP knuckles was broke. His whole hand was broke. Yeah. And that's how angry he was at this motherfucker. So yes, they fight to the death. How many deaths did you see in your 25 years? Club up and close personal? Up and close personal. Probably about seven. Seven. Every single one of them, were you surprised at it? Like, damn. Like, no, that I, that's... That shit like drinking this water, man. Shit. You get immune to that shit and you just walk off. That ain't your business anyway. That's the number one thing that, you know, you mind your business. Yeah. You know, and you just keep it pushing, man. Was there any uh, riots that kicked up while you was uh, in either, either three, either three of the units, any like a, like a legit escape attempt or riot that kicked off to like, hey, this shit is going down? Yeah, I've been a part of several riots. Don't tell me you organized that motherfucker. <laughs> you want me to lie to you? <laughs> nah, keep it 1,000, goddamn. I ain't, you, gonna, I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah, but you an organizer, motherfucker. I ain't gonna lie to you. You know what I'm saying? Was, so, yeah, 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 go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I've organized a, a few rides in my time. <laughs> so, a couple of coups. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but you gotta do that, man, because you gotta remember one thing, man, that if you coming in as a gang member, regardless of whatever side you on, right? You come into a whole new set to where it ain't no guns, right? Yeah. And I've been here and I've seen motherfuckers die, right? Yeah. So now uh, you move from your street OG, right? Yeah. To me. Damn. You know what I'm saying? That's facts, not facts. And uh, you only know what you know. So now you can't ask the person that put you down or whatever, right? Cause why? This is my motherfucking house. You a, you a gang member, right? Yeah. But I can get your ass sent home though. Damn. You know what I'm saying? That's real. Uh, that's the type of power I had. That's real. So what advice would you give to somebody right now? He walking in the hood, he got his pistol right now, you can see it outside his pants, and he ain't trying to fight nobody, he only shooting. And like, what advice would you give him right now? And he's small. And he's small? Yeah, he's small. So uh, my advice would be to him, man, is, is, is it only takes 60 seconds to kill a motherfucker, right? Mm -hmm. So, and you got to understand that for every action, it's a reaction. And if you murder a motherfucker, you going where they send murderers to, right? Yeah. And it's gonna be a lot of time that come with that. So for that person, you got to ask yourself, is that what you want? You willing to trade in, especially for a young motherfucker? 
you in the trade and all that technology, that fucking PS5 and that fucking cell phone yeah. and all that other shit, you willing to trade that in just because you want to show the next man to you that you're going to pull that trigger, right? Perspective. Uh, I think the answer to that is no, man. You put that motherfucker up, you literally see another day. You know, because if you pull it, you're going to do it. That's real. Um, Did you have to, uh, you know, we talked to a couple of different people where they say, man, uh, prison is modern day slavery. Uh, they getting it out of you. you you're going to be, I, we, I just heard the story about picking <laughs> cotton. I didn't know people actually picked cotton. I know they probably built railroads. They they did some other industrial stuff, but uh, I'm like, damn, they're picking cotton in, in prison. Did you have to go through the workforce uh, in prison and get through all that? They only pick cotton, right? Yeah, that's just okay. shit. Okay, so now, I don't pick motherfucking cotton, broom straw, the, the shit that you see on your broom, that straw. Yeah, yeah. I done picked that shit. They had a feel for it. Damn. I done picked that uh, fucking collard green, potatoes. F yo, farm work. Slavery. There's <laughs> no fucking farm work. <laughs> 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 fucking slavery. Shit. Uh, every fucking vestment you can name, I done picked. Damn. And in the process of me picking it, there's a white man on the horse calling you nigga. Literally. Yes. So uh, I wasn't there 500 years ago when the ancestors were slaves, but that same treatment and them same words, I got them same words. Nigga, get down that turn row. So what happens if you don't do it? What happens if you don't do it? Yeah, just like, I, today ain't the day. Okay, go stand over there. They got a motherfucking turn row on the side where all inmates that don't want to work. Right? Yeah. And they put you in this motherfucking black cage. Mind me what I said, a black cage. It's 110 outside. <laughs> and we all know black draw heat. <laughs> right? And, and you outside working in the field for two to three hours. So you ain't going in and that motherfucker ain't hooked up to nothing. Right? Yeah. So you in that cage. Just like they did back in slavery days. Damn. Put your ass in that cage and you gonna cook. That's what happened. And when you get on that back slab, they beat your motherfucking ass. So what? So for the next day, when it, you know tomorrow's gonna come, you're just gonna be like, I ain't doing that again. I'm I'm gonna go and fall in line. I'm gonna go and work. Okay, that's that violence we were talking about. Yeah. If a motherfucker kick you in your ass and stomp you in your face. Yeah, we. I ain't trying to get that every day. Okay, so you're gonna work. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's the that's what happened if you didn't work. There's nobody to, to complain to about the treatment. Who, who, who you gonna call? I mean, shit. So I mean, the warden, the warden with it. The warden with it. Yeah, the warden with it. And the first thing he gonna tell you, oh, I know my fucking field cap ain't lying on you. Go smell an ass, nigga. Get back to work. God damn. God. And you gotta remember, ain't no phones in the day room at that time. Yeah. They got phones in the day room to save them now. Yeah, everybody say now nah, it's like nigga got, got cell phones. My all that. I'm gonna show the treatment I'm getting treated. They out got here. all that shit back then. Guess what? All you can do is write a letter and hope that motherfucker get home if they don't stop it in the mirror room. Damn. Do you think that's is that still going on today? Like no, nah, because you know what, man, these boys got it easy now, man. When you go down there now, they give you a Samsung tablet, and you ain't got to go to the day room and watch TV no more. You can watch it on your tablet. So it ain't no field work. Were no they more. giving niggas tablets? They I'm, give you tablets when you come through the door now. Fuck oh, shit. They give you a fucking, they, they assign you a Samsung tablet. Oh, nigga, that's kind of lit. I ain't gonna lie. That's just make it a little easy. Easy. With some apps and shit. Like, nigga, you got 70 years. You think that's easy? That ain't easy, but I'm saying that, nigga, the tablet got Wi Fi, right? I mean, Yes, you got penitentiary Wi-Fi, but they don't get the apps that we get in the world. Oh, okay. You can't they, just do whatever. They don't you... internet. They selected apps. Oh, okay, so okay. I'm about to say, no, nigga. You can't watch no YouTube or none of that oh, shit, Oh, okay, right? okay, okay, okay. Shit. So, but you got to understand that the mind game they playing with them, they killing them softly. Now nah, they are. They are. They understand one thing. You are a millennial with, 70, with a seven-year sentence. I'm going to give you something that you used to in the world. <laughs> but I'm not going to give you fully access, right? <laughs> Facts. Okay, and they're going to look at this fucking tablet and they're going to think just like you just thought. 
this shit is cool. Just, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's the mind game they playing with them right now. For the most part, uh, what percentage of people in the prison would you say is violent? If you were to put a percentage on it. That are violent? That are violent. Uh, as far as the crime they uh, call No, as far as being in prison, oh, they're violent. Like, right now? Yeah. I'll give you 10%. The rest of that shit ain't doing, they don't do So shit. most people are just cool in prison. They just talk. Like today. Oh, today oh, they, just, they just talk. Okay, they just talk. Uh, uh, they're going to spit fight all day on the regular yard. Yeah. Oh, you a bitch. You a hoe. You a bitch. You a hoe. Fuck you. All day. All day. Okay. And at the end of that month, they're going to do like this. I see you tomorrow, bro. Damn. It's over with. They don't want no damn look, man. They don't want no cell restriction. They don't want the TV. Cut yeah, off. like you got to do this time. Like, nigga, I ain't trying to sit in solitary for the. They ain't trying to do all that. They ain't built like that no more. Yeah. They ain't trying to go no solitary. They ain't trying to not go to visitation and see their people no more. No. That shit is long gone. I seen K2 in prison now, man. Um, K2, fuck yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I don't know how they got it in there, but now it's getting niggas, like niggas is going through times. How they got it in there? Well, we know how they get in there. <laughs> I mean, it it's funny because even, even now, uh, uh, drones is dropping shit off in the goddamn yard. So, you know, we go, there's there's clever ways to get shit in there now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but to see that K2 shit, and I'm like, God damn. Like, Have you ever smoked K2? I never, but I seen somebody on it. I have. Ooh. Did it affect you like? That shit fucked me up. Damn. Did somebody record it or no? No. Okay, so you did no. it You did it in your own time and your no, own. No, I did it with a. Don't say a female. No, hell no. <laughs> I did it with a with a. It was a. It was. It was like you know, kind of like old school when you got that circle. Yeah. And you and you pass that motherfucker around. That's right? when I seen it. Okay, so, but these motherfuckers are immune to this shit. These motherfuckers <laughs> that's coming in there now, they can smoke this shit all day. And here I am in this motherfucker. I ain't, ain't never hit it in my life. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I'm smoking this motherfucker when it's passing around, right? And I hit that motherfucker. And by the time it came back around, my hand was still right here. Damn, <laughs> me stuck. Yeah, I'm fucked up, right? Oh shit! And uh, once I got unstuck, everybody was gone. Oh, so that <laughs> by the I'm, time you got unstuck, the circuit had busted up. I'm still standing there. Don't I don't know what the fuck happened. You feel like some minutes passed, an hour, to a couple, probably, probably a couple of seconds, a minute. I don't know, how, but I know I was fucked up and I couldn't stand there. You know, I was still standing there, and everybody was gone. At that moment, I knew that shit wasn't for me. Wasn't for me. Yeah, I seen I seen it pass around a circle where some niggas was able to hit it. Cool. The other niggas that never hit it, oh, I see them swimming on the floor, uh, doing all kinds of shit. I'm like, damn. Yeah, and was, there was no guards in sight to even come in and say, hey, my nigga. Guards? They don't, <laughs> look, man, ain't nobody working for the motherfucking chicken feed no more. Yeah. That's why they getting them all that extra shit, tablets and all that shit to keep them occupied so it ain't no more violence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like I said, they killing them softly, but they don't give a fuck because they smoking K2 and looking at the tablet. I'm curious, what, what are your thoughts on the death penalty? Just uh, in, 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 in some instances, it's necessary, mm. right? Uh, but death penalty is only to satisfy the public. That's what it's for. That's the only thing is to satisfy the public. Why? Because if I kill 100 people, right? Yeah. Those hundred people are not coming back. Yeah, one for one for a hundred is what, we, what yeah. we're talking. So they not coming back. So all that shit is political. That's just to satisfy the people. Say so you know what he killed a hundred people, so we killed him to make sure he don't do it no more, right? Yeah. Okay. So, but if you give a motherfucker life without parole, it's the same thing. If you lock him up forever, he dead anyway. Dead anyway. So yeah. you know, I think the death penalty man is 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 really overrated. Damn. Uh, did you ever serve any time with any celebrities? Anybody of note? Yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> Hollywood. Hollywood. Hey, so. You always hear about like the Boosie stories. You hear about um like uh Pimp C. You hear about Soldier um uh, uh C Murder. Uh you hear about different people that's kind of you know of celebrity status. Did you ever have to like see any of these kind of kind of people? Nah, I ain't never served no time with no credible celebrities as far yeah. as the money wise, right? But even if so, if I did serve time with them, right? Uh, I don't think I look at them the same way everybody else look at them. Because mm. once the cameras and all that shit go off, you just like me. You still got to eat them soups. You still got to eat them <laughs> motherfucking chips. 
and you can't spend nothing but a certain amount of money in the commissary, right? That's right. Uh, so I probably would have looked at them the same, man, but you know, it is what it is, man. So, nah. It, it is what it is. Now, you did 25 years, Um, you, you did 25. You are supposed to do life. How'd you, like what, what circumstance played into like, you know, cause you're, I'm assuming you knew you were gonna get out prior to doing 25 years, or did you know like like maybe weeks or months before you actually got out? Like was it? No, set- I mean the the the, the sentence carried even before you seen parole, you gotta do 15, right? Yeah. You gotta do 15 years even before you uh you make parole, right? Yeah. And just so happen, man, I did 25 on the life sentence, right? Yo. And I got fucking three set offs. I got nine years worth of set offs. But that didn't mean I was going to make parole. Right? Uh, you never know if you got a life sentence, if you're going to make parole or not, because it's, it's people still dying there that had the same time that I had. And they still there. No facts. So, uh, did you say anything different on your on your last parole hearing? Like, did I say anything different? Yeah, they'd be wanting you to like to just really admit and just say, are you changed? Are you fixed? No, I didn't say nothing different, but I will say this, that uh, it's, it's, the, the system is so fucked up to where it's like, man, uh, you have to fuck up in order to get out. You know what I'm saying? If that makes yeah. any sense. You have, to, you have to fuck up in prison in order to make parole. Wait, so what? You got to like fuck up like as in they want you out of there? Like, no, nigga. you have to fuck up while you in that system. In other words, uh, you have to cause trouble while you're in the system to where when you do come up for parole years later, it'll show growth now that you're doing good. Oh, they actually want to see like, fuck doing five years and like you squeaky clean. Yeah. Nah, you got in there and you got to the shit. Yeah. And then hell nah, but now that you, since that last couple of issues, yeah, you, you've been reformed. Yeah, but you see, so that's what I'm saying. That's crazy. The system is fucked up. So wait, wait, so a person coming in, you're saying they should probably get with the shit. Yeah. Versus thinking that something gonna happen within a couple of months to a year, and they gonna be like, oh, you've been great for two years here, you you get, get with the shit. Yeah. Cause yeah. They, they got some shit where it's called, when they set you up, it's a failure to adjust to the institutional system. They give you a set off. Yeah. And cause why they feel like you're playing on the system. You know what I'm saying? If you if you go straight through, right, you playing on the system. So with me, uh, I had a 10, 10 year stretch where I was just fucking up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? This your twenties? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had a 10 year stretch. You know what I'm saying? Where I was just terrorizing that bitch and terrorizing whoever got in my way. Yeah. And uh for the last 15 years. I just shut it down. And so, you know, when they seen that, wow, 10 years straight, he's fucking up. Now the last 15, he ain't fucking up. So he might be uh, reformed. Did you go in expecting they gonna let you out that last time? Like, hey, I'm, I, nigga, I didn't did this time. I didn't did so much time, it don't even matter. You never go into the parole board thinking these motherfuckers gonna let you go. After you done got so many set off, you already know what you got coming. And you done seen everybody before you get all them set offs in your mind. You said, man, ain't gonna be nothing but another motherfucking set off. You know, so no, I didn't go into it thinking they were gonna let me go. Damn, so they actually gave you the word like, hey, you hey, what they tell you, you you got hey, you up for it, you got three months, you're free. What what how much time they give you letting you know you're gonna get up? Well, like I said, it's a process, man. You gotta go through the parole board, and that shit got to get voted on. And all that other drag out shit. See, they bring your ass in there real quick, but when it's time to let you get out, they drag you through the mud. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I had a team, man. You know, I had a team that, uh, that, that that put a lot of work in to get me back to the home front. There you go. And actually, it was one person. I had a, a one a one woman team. Oh, who who that who that? It's my wife. You know, for, oh, man. for for thirty some years. Remember, I told you. You remember I told you when I went on that tour? Yeah. And that woman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same woman to this day. Wait, wait, wait. The woman who, uh, the CEO? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, oh while wow. you was wilding? Yes. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, the same, okay, yeah. Yeah. 
So that's the same woman who been by yourself? The same woman. How long y'all been married? Over, like, over 30 something years. So you got married back? I got married when I was in prison. Damn. You know? was, that, was that for the benefits of her coming to see you or? No, it was the benefits of what I fucked up before I went to prison. There you go. There you go. You know, that was my, it wasn't no security blanket as far as me keeping her locked in. Yeah. Just cause you married to me, you know, you can move around anytime you fucking get ready. Paper don't uh, signify that, that it's gonna work. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that was some real shit. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it was shit that I suppose it did before I left. Yeah. You know, so uh, that was the team I'm telling you about. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, and, like, and I understood, you know, hey, nigga, you fucked it up the first time. Don't blow it. Now you came out, again, you came out young. I mean, to do 25 and co go in young, you got a lot of time left. Um, I'm curious. I came out looking young. Yeah, you came out looking young. Let's say that. Yeah, you, yeah. Uh, work, you know, you came out looking young. Yeah, I ain't young. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. To, you might have lived 20 lifetimes. Yeah. And that, yeah, you might have lived 20 people's lifetimes. Yeah. For what for what you experienced. Um, what was your, I'm just curious, what 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 do you do your first day out? Again, you said you went in as a kid, not knowing this is the last time you'll see like just being free walking around, and you did 25 from that first time. Or you know the second time, what do you do when you get out? Like, are you even able to adjust? Like, what's your first day out? What's your first day out? What you doing? Oh, uh, well, I able to adjust. The answer to that was yes, because you gotta remember, uh, for fifteen years, I didn't, I didn't live like I was locked up. Yeah, that's true. I already knew how to use a cell phone. Yeah, because yeah. I used it in there. So it was, you know, where most people come home and get an Android, I came home and got an iPhone. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm already on game. I already know how to use it, Damn. and at this time when I when I'm come, when I'm first day, I'm already educated now. Okay. See, I, I'm not the dumb motherfucker that when I went in there. You actually start reading some books later on. I actually got a motherfucking two college degrees. Two college, yeah. so not yeah. one, but two. Two. And so I'm not the same person when I went in as when I got out. Do you tell, should everyone try to get a, a degree or some type of multiple degrees while they're in, uh, even if they're not, even if they're looking at life sentences, should do you tell everyone like, hey, you should actually seek education while you in there? Yes, if you can see past the bullshit. Mm -hmm. But uh, your character got to be in place even for you to even accomplish that. That's right. You know, because there's so much other shit going on around you and it's a major distraction, man. Yeah, you know, and and and, and, and that once again, you got to be a special person to even cross that line to even achieve that. That's you right. know, because it's, it, it's so many people in prison right now want to go to school, they want to do this right, but shit, I'm hungry, man. Mm. So I got to hustle. I ain't got time to be in no motherfucking schoolhouse. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So you got to have a drive to in in, in the will to want to do that. But at the end of the day, uh, it's got to be substance behind it, man, and the reason why you're doing it, you know. And it, well, life sentence, man, when you, when it's dark, people say, man, let it, that shit ain't gonna do me no good. Facts, facts. So, what advice would you give? Um, and this is a blanket statement again. Um, somebody who, of course, is young, commits a crime, just trying to feed their family. Uh, they get sentenced to prison, never did time in prison for real. What advice would you give them to get through, let's say, an extended sentence? Anything 10 years plus? My first advice to them would be to them, man, it is, it is I'm not going to say pay attention to your surroundings because prison has changed so much, man. You, you know, you even have to be intimidated by the shit that go on in prison now, right? Yeah. But the only person that's going to reform you is you, you know? You, you have to reform yourself, man, and, and, and Texas Department of Criminal Justice, they do offer a lot of programs. I will admit that, but you have to apply yourself. That's the only way you're going to make it, man. You have to apply yourself, and not only that, you got to have confidence that one day you'll be free again, man. And uh, school ain't for everybody. That's real. You know? You see people in society right now that got college degrees that can't even get a job. That's real. That's real. So uh, don't lose confidence and faith in yourself, man, even if you do go to prison, man. You know? So for you, because again, we, um, 
we had a uh, kryptonite in here. We had a uh, OG Percy, a couple other guys, and they all like really respected you, looked up to you. Um, so you obviously did something to gain to garner respect of even these guys who younger niggas respect uh, from Percy and everybody. I saw the uh, the podcast you have where you actually had Percy, Kryptonite, a couple other guys. Um, you brought them all together to have a conversation, even though it got a little yeah, crazy, yeah, crazy. Yeah. I mean, you, know, you, you still brought them together to have that conversation. Oh, yeah. uh, like. For you to gain that respect from them, like what was it? Just the amount of time you did, the moves you made while you was in there, the the way you did the time. Like, what is it uh, that you feel that garnered that respect from those guys who have respect themselves? Uh, I have to say this, man: that respect is not given; it's yeah. earned. That's real. But the men who give a person respect, right? That's when you lose the person. Mm. Right, so uh, I treat people accordingly. You know, yeah. I can't treat you like no killer if I know you're not one, even though you might think you one. Mm. And I just look at you for what you are, right? And with Crib Night, right? Crib Night, who he is, because he put a lot of work in to become the person who he is. Right? And uh, he inspired a lot of people, you know, to uh, move on because he know, he know you can do better. And why? Because he's been broke before. <laughs> that always puts you in your place. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and he's a realist. It is what it is. But uh, you can't deny whatever he brings to the table. It has substance behind it. You know, yeah. I'm not gonna bring you an empty table with no food on it. You'll be able to eat, right? There you go. And with press, right? Yeah. Not to speak against him. I don't know if I don't know enough to give him flowers or take flowers, right? Yeah. But I will say this is that. I understand the meaning of uh, friends and associates, but you as a person have determined which one of those you are. That's real. Not as real. And that has nothing to do with me. Oh, that's uh, that's real. That's real. All right, man. Let's do it like this, man. Hollywood. Uh, you got any? Are you on Instagram? Are you on uh, Facebook? Are you on social media? Yeah, I'm on all social media, man. You can look up OG Hollywood Speaks, man. And uh, you really can find me on YouTube, OG Hollywood Speaks, man. I am the CEO of the Ferguson Chronicle, man, where uh, brothers come to the day room and share their stories, whether it be good or whether it be bad. And I love it because it feels like the day room, man. We got brothers in there. You have maybe six, seven, eight people talking at one time. And it's just, you go, you chronicling uh, chronicling their situation, their, their history. Their, hey, you let them get off what they want to get off again. I seen it with OG Percy. Uh, kryptonite, uh, you know, you uh, kind of managing them just having a conversation about what it is. It's good to have a place to be able to say, hey, fellas, y'all come tell y'all story. And I want to be able to say that again. What's the name of it on YouTube? Because I want people it's to be able to Ferguson reach it. Chronicle, man, where it's uh, OG Hollywood speak. You can Google it, man. It's everywhere now. There you go. Nah, <laughs> nah, it's, it's big as shit. It's everywhere Again, you're going to see man. some people you know on that motherfucker. And you're going to see people you don't know. Yeah. yeah. You know? Get to know them, goddamn. And uh, before we get out of here, man, I want to uh, I want to say that you can also purchase your Savage Drive gear yes. at www.oghollywoodspeaks.com. And uh we're gonna put that in the we're gonna put that in the description. Trust me, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get, get them to it. Yeah, you can get that. You man. see the hat? Y'all see the hat? Oh, Y'all see that's, that. Yeah, that's made by and not only that, let me say this. It's not uh prison related, right? Yeah. I wear all Savage Drive gear. This is just me. And my testimony to Savage Drive, this reminds me of where I never, ever want to go back to. There you go. Which is Savage Drive. This is the substance that I speak about. You have to have substance about thing that you don't want to return to. Yeah. Because without no substance, you will go back to what you used to do, man. There you go, man. You got any shots you want to give? Yeah, I want to give a shout out to man, my boy, uh, Crip tonight, for show. Sure. Shout out, Crip. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my wife, right? Definitely. Bless us. Uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Big Dewberry. Big Dew. Yeah, my homeboy from Burt. 
right? Yeah. And uh, it's so many, I can't give a shout out to everybody, man. But oh, for, any, man. for anybody that support the channel, the channel, man, shout out to y'all, man. Like I say, man, uh, it is what it is, man. And I'm going to say this before I go, man. Peace and blessings, man, to everybody, man. There you go. And that's it, man. There you go, man. You already know what it is, man. We got him. He didn't tell the story. This is just part of it, though. We ain't got it all. We hey, like we tell people, man, don't get too lit to forget, man. Come back and holler at us. We got him on the couch, man. We gotta say it, man. You are a true one. You are a real life street star, man. We salute, man. Hollywood in the building. Facts. Chip. Shout out real street stars, nigga. Moon. Hey.